Hello everybody, welcome back to session 2 on design of slab base. I hope you have really enjoyed listening to session 1 with respect to design of slab base. Before we go ahead with the presentation in this session, let us try to have a quick recap of what we had discussed in the last session. If you just try to look at the various things that we have talked about, okay. So, we have seen the introduction to column base, then types of column base, that is slab base, a gusseted base and then we had started some examples also, if I am correct, we had finished the example connected with the slab base, okay, in the last session. Let us go ahead and then try to look at some numerical examples connected with gazetted base. Now, I hope you have seen this particular uh, picture in the last session also. Now, we just try to look at this carefully. Okay. So, we have a slab base here, correct, at the bottom. Okay. The column is trying to transfer the load onto the slab base and the column is supported by a gazette plate okay, on either side of the flanges and to hold this flange with the uh, slab base, we also have a gusset angle. Okay. So, in this particular problem, so we are just trying to look at the bolted connection okay, for the uh, gusset plate and subsequently we will also see the analysis okay, of the welded uh, connection with respect to the gusseted base. Now, this is the typical plan that we have here okay, showing the uh, various details connected with the uh, base slab, correct. Then we have the column okay, and then the uh, gazette plates, the, the gazette angle okay, and then the uh, upholding bolts or the anchor bolts. So, this is the front elevation and that is the side elevation that we have here with respect to this particular connection. Now, let us look into the numerical problem that we are trying to talk about in this particular session. So, we have a column okay, of section ISHB 350, correct. So, that is the section that we are trying to talk about. It carries an axial uh, factored okay, compressive load of 1700 kilonewtons. So, we are trying to just design an appropriate bolted gazetted collection that we are trying to have here and we are trying to say that this rests on M20 grade concrete okay, on which we are trying to keep the slab base and we are trying to use okay, 24 mm diameter bolts okay, in the connection of grade 4.6. So, these are the data that we have for this particular problem. Okay. Now, the first thing as we have mentioned, the load acting on the column is 1700 kiloton and it is the factored load that we have here. Now, let us try to talk about some important details that are given here. Okay. So, regarding the grid of steel, it is 410 for which the ultimate strength okay, and the yield strength okay, are assumed to be 410 and 250 mega pascals. Okay. Now, as we understand, we have got bolts of grade uh, 4.6 okay, for which the uh, uh, value of FUB correct is taken as 400 mega pascals. Coming to the partial set factors that we are trying to use in this particular discussion. So, we have got gamma M0 okay, and gamma MB whose values are 1.10 and 1.25 okay, which are given in table 5 okay, of IS 800-2007. The first thing that we have said is we have just talked about the grade of concrete on which the base slab rests. It is given that the grade of concrete is M20, correct, is what we are trying to talk about. So, we need to understand what is the maximum 
okay, bearing pressure that we have that the concrete can endure, okay, when you just try to subject it to some stress, okay, or load. Now, please understand, okay, as per clause 34.4 of IS uh, 456 2000, okay, so the bearing strength we can limit it to 0.45 CK, correct? In, in, on, in other words, okay, we are trying to see to it that, okay, you have to provide sufficient area of the base plate such that, okay, the, the stress, okay, uh, in concrete should not exceed the bearing strength of concrete which happens to be 9 megapascals, okay. Now, coming to some properties of the given column section. So, the column section is ISHP 350, okay, at 661.2 Newton per meters. Okay, so if you just try to look at the steel tables, so you can just try to know the depth, okay, the width, correct, and the thickness of the web and the thickness of the flange, right? All those things can be obtained, and this is what we have here. So depth is three uh, three fifty, okay, and then the width is two fifty. The thickness of the flange is eleven point six millimeters, and the thickness of the web is eight point three millimeters. So this can be obtained from the steel tables. Now, the first thing that we are trying to talk about is, okay, we are trying to arrive at the thickness and length of the gazette plate, okay, and the size of the gazette angle. So, we are just trying to fix up these numbers, correct? So, that is the first one is, we are trying to find out the thickness and length of the gazette plate. So, dimension is what we are trying to talk about, okay, and the size of the gazette angle that we are trying to talk about. Please understand, we are trying to provide these gazette plates parallel to the flange. Okay, the first thing that we have understood is, from the previous slide, the thickness of the flange happens to be 11.6 millimeters. Now, when you are trying to choose the thickness of the gazette plate, it should be more than thickness of the flange. So, that means we are trying to say that, okay, it should be more than that. Now, in this particular case, we are trying to assume a value more than that. That is, we are trying to say it is 16 millimeters, more than 16 millimeters. So, that is fine. Now, the next thing is, Okay, we are trying to take some gazette angle and we are trying to take right an angle of 150 by 115 by 15. Please understand this one this is an unequal leg angle, unequal leg angle. Now the larger leg of size 150 mm okay, will be used to connect the gazette plate. Please understand the length is sufficiently large here so that we can accommodate two rows that is horizontal rows okay, of bolts. So, that is why we are trying to keep this uh, size a bit larger when compared to the size of okay, the other leg size that is 115. This leg connects okay, the angle with the base plate. right? So, this is what you have to notice in this particular case. So, having assumed this particular uh, angle, now we can decide what should be the length okay, of the uh, uh, I mean uh, your slab base. I make clear. So, what should be the length of the slab base? So, please understand the length of the base plate, the length of the base plate is nothing but the uh, angle that we are trying to have here, I am sorry, the, the uh, column size that is 350 okay, plus the two uh, gazette plates of size 16 millimeters placed on either side okay, of the column flange. Okay, and then okay, the two uh, uh, gazette angles. Now, please understand of these two legs, I did tell you that this leg is going to connect the gazette plate and this size that is 115 is going to connect the uh, base plate. So, you take 2 into 115 that happens to be 612 millimeters. So, that is the minimum length that we should have here. We are just trying to round it off okay, to a slightly larger value of 620. Correct. So, this is what you need to understand. We are just rightly trying to revise that, increase it to 620 millimeters. So, how did we arrive at this 620? I did tell you that this is 350, correct, right? That is 350, that is your column depth, okay? And then we have here 16 millimeters, okay, is the uh, thickness, okay, of your uh, uh, gazette plate. And then we have the cleat angle, okay, whose size is 115. Okay, cleat angle, right? So you ha also have a gazette plate and a cleat angle on the other side. The sum of all these lengths will be six one two, but we are just trying to slightly round it off to a higher value 
which is 620 millimeters, right? That is what we have said, okay? So, 612 revised to 620 millimeters. Now, we have fixed up, okay, one size, correct? I make clear one, one dimension, okay, of your uh, 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 base plate that is 620 millimeters. Okay, now, the next thing that we are trying to talk about is, okay, so we need to accommodate, okay, sufficient number of bolts here, okay, so that, right, so you can uh, assume that the, the connection is safe. So, the first thing is we have to understand, okay, so what is the bolt value that we have for the given size bolts. Please understand, we have assumed in this particular case, right, okay, diameter as 24 mm. 24 mm is the uh, diameter that we are trying to assume or that has been given for in this particular problem, correct. Now, we are just trying to talk about connection between the flange column, okay, and the gazette plate, correct. Now, you need to understand that the bolts here are in single shear, okay. Why do you say that it is single shear? So, we just try to check, right. So, that is the uh, gazette plate that we have here, okay. So, beside the gazette plate, okay, please understand that, okay, we will be having we will be having the column flange. So, the first one, okay, this could be the gazette plate, that could be the column flange. So, if I am just trying to connect a bolt here, you can understand that, okay, the bolt fails, okay, at the intermediate point. That means here, okay, it is going to fail at the intermediate point. So, obviously, it is in single shear, correct. So, you need to understand that in this case, the bolts are in single shear, that is connection between the flange column, okay, and the gazette plate. So, if you just try to compute, okay, the capacity, okay, of this bolt, okay, in single shear. So, it happens to be 65.21 new uh, kilonewtons and the strength of the bolt in bearing will be 124.64 kilonewton. So, we need to take the least of the two. So, the least of the two is, is called as the strength of the bolt or you can also call it as a bolt value. So, please understand each bolt can take a strength or uh, okay, yeah, you just can take a load of something like 65.21 kilonewtons. Okay, so this is important. Okay, unless you uh, calculate this, you will not be able to calculate the number of bolts required. Okay, in that particular connection. Okay, so this is what you need to understand. Now, having done this, okay, so the next important thing that we are trying to talk about is how much of the load, okay, should be resisted by the bolts. Now, generally what we are trying to uh, understand here is, okay, we just try to talk about the machined surfaces. That means, perfectly smooth surfaces. So, that, okay, the contact of load, okay, can happen through bearing. Now, we are trying to assume a very important thing. We are trying to assume that, correct, the end of the column, that is the column base, okay, the gazette plate end. So, we are trying to keep two gazette plates on either side of the flanges. So, at the bottom, okay, we are trying to say that, okay, that is also machined properly, okay, and the top of the base plate, okay, the top of the base plate. So, three things, okay, bottom of the column, bottom of the gazette plate and top of the base plate, all are machined perfectly. So, with this assumption, please understand that, okay, we can easily say that 50 percent of the column load, okay, will be directly transferred through bearing correct, 50 percent will be transferred through contact, okay, and the remaining 50 percent, remaining 50 percent, okay, of the load, okay, should be considered for the design of bolt connection. Is it all right? So, this is a very important thing that you should understand, okay, in this particular case, right. Now, as I told you, okay, so the factored load is 1700. So, half of that is what you are going to take, that would be 850 kilonewton is what you are trying to take in this particular design, okay, design of bolted connection. Now, you need to understand that there are two uh, gazettes that we have here. So, one on that side of the flange and the other one on this side of the flange, correct. So, the load, okay, that we are trying to design, okay, at each flange will be half of this. That means, half of uh, uh, 850, that would be 425 kN. So, you need to understand that, okay, in each plate, Okay, right. So, when we are trying to design the bolted connection, correct, we have to design to take a total load of 425 kilonewton, correct. Now, we have just understood, okay, what is the bolt value? So, the bolt value that we have is 
65.21 kilonewton. That means each volt okay, can take a load of 65.21 kilonewton. So, the total load it has to resist is 425. So, you can just divide okay, 425 by 65.21. So, you get okay, the number of volts required that is 6.52. So, we need to round it off okay, right, to a higher value. When we round it off to a higher value, you get 7, but we do not take 7 okay, because we always take even numbers because we are trying to align the bolts in two vertical rows. Correct. So, we need to understand that we are trying to take an, the next higher even number. So, 6.52. So, that would be 8 numbers. Okay. So, we need to understand we are trying to talk about 8 numbers of given diameter that is 24 millimeter dia bolts and we are just trying to arrange this in two columns. Okay. Two columns right, is what we are trying to see and you will just try to see that in the next figure. So, look at this. This is what we are trying to have here. Correct. So, the number of bolts that we are trying to have here 1, 2, 3, 4 on this, co on this uh, 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 column and 1, 2, 3, 4. So, totally we have put 8 bolts in this particular case, 8 bolts. I hope you have understood okay, this particular arrangement. So, we need to have 8 bolts and of these 8 bolts, please understand okay, the lower 4 bolts okay, will be uh, I, I mean uh, through that uh, gusset angle correct that we are trying to have here and the upper one okay, would be okay, connecting uh, I mean it will be basically in the uh, gusset plate is what you need to understand. But please notice that between the cleat angle and the flange you will also have this gusset plate okay, uh, a position in that particular case. Right? Now, we need to understand what should be the height of the gusset plate that we should have here. So, if you just try to look at this, so um, and this height is 150 that is nothing but the angle. Now, beyond this, okay, what should be the height that we are trying to have here? Now, please understand that we are trying to assume, we are trying to assume that okay, the edge distance okay, here is 40, that means distance from the edge to this is 40. Okay. So, distance between these two that you can call it as pitch to be 60 and another 40, correct. So, that means totally it is 140. So, that means beyond this it is 140 is what we have assumed in this particular case 140 and okay and and below that we have the uh, angle uh, 150 mm leg size so totally the height of this particular gusset plate will be okay 290 millimeters i make clear so that is what we try to understand so we are trying to arrive at the dimension of the gusset plate so the dimension of the gusset plate that means the height of the gusset plate right okay near the center or at the flange Okay, column flange here that would be 290 correct. Now, but that can be tapered it is we do not try to recommend okay, having a gusset plate something like this because please understand that would be a waste of material okay, and it is not going to help us okay, in any way. So, we can just try to take it out okay, we can just try to take this portion out okay, and then we are just trying to okay, design the gusset plate like this okay, taper it okay, uniformly. So, from okay, a width of 250 okay, to the width of the uh, plate okay, that would be the B that is width of the slab base. So, anyway, so we just try to bring it down okay, uh, uh, to the edge okay, to a height of 150 correct and that is what we are just trying to say here. So, that means the height of the gusset plate that would be the height of the uh, uh, gusset angle 150. So, that would be 2 into 40 as I just mentioned okay, here. So, we got 140 above and 140 below correct and in between we have got 60 correct. So, it is plus 60 that would be 290. So, that is how we have arrived at the height of the gusset plate okay. and we are as, as we just said we are trying to put 8 numbers okay, of bolts we have already seen okay. and then regarding the uh, uh, length of the gusset plate I make clear. So, what should be the length of the gusset plate that we should have here correct is, is very important. So, just try to look here right. So, that is the previous figure that we are trying to talk about. Now, how do I arrive at B? How do I arrive at B? Okay, length of the gusset plate. Now, please understand it is a normal practice okay, to have the same number of bolts that means as we have arrived at. So, how many bolts we have arrived here? 8. Okay. So, what we are trying to say is we also try to put 8 bolts. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. I make clear? Right? And these 8 bolts connect the gusset angle 
okay, with this with the gazette plate. This is the gazette angle and the gazette plate. Now, once you have understood this, you can easily arrive, okay, you can easily arrive, okay, at the uh, values. So, here this is 250 as you know and here I am just trying to assume some spacings here. Okay, assume some spacings here. So, as I did uh, tell you 40, 60, 40. So, that would be the edge distance 40, that would be the edge distance 40 and that would be 60, correct. So, that means what? Okay, so, we have 140 here and another 140 here, another 140 here, correct, very similar to that. Okay, and then we have 250 here. So, the total width okay, that we should provide Okay, or the length of the gazette plate that we should, that we should provide will be the summation of 250 okay, plus 140 plus 140, correct. So, that is how we have arrived at okay, the width okay, or, or length of the uh, plate that means uh, 250 is it all right and as I told you 2 into 40 plus 60 2 times and that is 530 millimeters. I make clear, did you understand? Okay. Now, obviously here okay, we are trying to have a slightly larger length and uh, if you just try to calculate uh, uh, as we are trying to come um, and, uh, calculate the bearing pressure on the concrete, it will be slightly lesser side. Okay? We, we cannot go up to 9 mega Pascals because of this particular criteria. You should accommodate suitable number of sufficient number of bolts. So, obviously, you have to have a larger width here okay, to accommodate these bolts. So, we have 530 mm here okay? and I am just trying to slightly round it off. I am trying to say, so let the length of the gazette plate be uh, 540 mm and having assumed the length here, so that will be equal to the width of the plate. Now, please understand the width of the base plate and the length of the gusset plate both will be same and we are trying to take it as 540 millimeters, correct. So, this is how we have arrived at the dimensions okay, of the uh, uh, base plate. So, right now we have arrived at the width of the base plate, earlier we had arrived at the length of the base plate. So, that means what we have just talked about the dimension of the base plate, right? Okay. And regarding the gazette plate, also we have seen. So this is the width that we just arrived at, 540. Okay. Regarding the uh, gazette plate, so please understand it. It it has a width of 250 at the top. It has a width of 540 at the bottom, correct? And the width tapers from 250, okay, to 540 at a height of 150, okay, uniformly. I hope you are trying to see these details. So these are eight bolts. Okay, which we had arrived okay, earlier right? and these are extra 8 bolts that we have provided okay, to connect the angle okay, with the plate, gazette plate. right? So, this is what you have here. So, that is the top view that is dimension of the plate, okay, 540 width and 620 uh, is the length of the plate okay? and then this is the cleat angle that we are trying to have here on either side. So, that is the uh, uh, I mean uh, 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 column section that you are trying to see over here. And the first two lines okay, represents the gazette plate okay, and the next two lines represents the uh, uh, angle that we are trying to have here that is 150 mm angle coming out. Okay. So, having a thickness of 15 millimeters. So, I hope you can understand this particular figure. Okay. And again to summarize the dimension of the gazette plate, so we had said thickness is 16 millimeters, okay, height 290 uh, millimeters. Okay, near the column flange, right? Uh, I'm sorry. It's, uh, yeah, 290 at the top. Okay, height, and then it reduces to 150. Okay, at the edge of the bla uh, plate, coming to the length, 250 millimeters at the top flange, and gradually, okay, increases to 540. Correct. So we had just discussed this, right? And I'm just trying to uh, give you this uh, in, 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 in figures. Like that's what I said. Okay, 250 to uh, 540 and 290 to 150. Correct. Same figure. Okay. Now, the next one is please understand that the uh, gusset plate okay, it will be subjected to compression. That means please understand. Okay. So, that means we are just trying to check. Okay. So, regarding this edge okay, and this edge, right, they are susceptible for compression. Okay. Generally, we just try to uh, consider that. Okay. Now, there is this is the first edge and that is the second edge. So, we are just trying to say portion in the column flange. So, this is what we are trying to say portion in the column flange. So, when I say portion in the column flange, so this is what we were trying to talk about po portion in the column flange, correct. So, edge 1 and edge 2. Now, in this particular case, when you say this portion 1, okay, as you can clearly notice that this portion okay, is connected okay, to the flange through means of bolts, correct. 
am I clear? So, it is not free, okay, it is connected. So, because it is connected, okay, it will not buckle. So, this is what you need to understand. So, when you are just trying to talk about check for buckling of compression edge, okay, of the gusset plate. So, that please understand the portion in the flange of the column, okay, that is here, okay, does not buckle is what you need to understand, okay, right, does not buckle and you do not need to consider, do not need to check, right, the buckling of this portion, okay, of the gusset plate, right, you do not need to do that, okay. So, however, we have to just try to talk about buckling of this portion and we are trying to see that okay in the next slide okay the next one what we call as the outstanding portion of gusset from the column flange so we call this as the outstanding portion okay of the gusset uh, plate now look at this okay right i i did tell you that the total length here is 540 so if you just try to deduct from 540 250 okay and if you just try to divide that by 2 okay you get this dimension as 145 okay the dimension that we have is 145 Correct. So, what you need to understand is okay, the outstanding length here is 145, correct, this dimension, okay, clearly see this dimension and this dimension is 140 because the total height is 290, okay. So, you can just try to use the hypotenuse uh, uh, principle here to calculate the length of this surface, okay, or this edge we call as S naught, okay. What will be the length of this particular dimension is what we are trying to look at. Now, we just try to look at here, right. So, this is what we have got that is 145. I did tell you how we got this 145. So, total width minus width of the column flange divided by 2, okay. This is what I was trying to say 145. Having got that, okay, the next one is I am just trying to use that hypotenuse rule root of, okay, 145 square plus, okay, the other one, okay, that would be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 250. This is total is uh, uh, 290 minus 150 that is 140, correct. So, you got this as 140 square and you get that slant edge, slant length as 201.56 millimeters and the thickness of the gazette plate as we had assumed was 16 millimeters, okay. Now, having calculated the length to the thickness, so we are just trying to take the ratio of these two, okay. So, the ratio of, okay, that is the slant edge to the thickness that is 201.56 by 16, you got this as 12.60, correct. Now, we have to check whether this particular ratio, right, is within the permissible limit and it does not get into slender section criteria, correct. So, what we are now to try to do is look at table 2 of IS 800 2007, okay, and then quickly calculate the value of epsilon, which is nothing but the ratio of 250 by Fy, the, the grade of steel is 250. So, the value of epsilon you got in this particular case is 1. So, having got that, okay, you just try to look at this table again, table 2 of IS 800 2007 and then to try to check, okay. So, we are trying to say that, okay, for semi-compact section, semi-compact section, right, okay, this ratio, right, should not exceed S naught by T, Tg ratio should not exceed 13.6 epsilon, which is nothing but 13.6, correct, which is nothing but 13.6. Now, we try to make a comparison. So, please understand, however, if this were to be still smaller, then instead of semi-compact, it would have been compact or if it is still less, it could have been plastic section. But however, okay, we should not get into, okay, the slender sections is what you need to understand over here. Right. So, whether it is plastic section or it is compact section or semi-compact section, it is all right, okay. But it should not exceed the limit, okay, with respect to semi-compact section. So, right now, it is 13.6. Now, we are trying to compare, okay, this S naught uh, by TG, a TG ratio with that limiting width. So, that means we are trying to say that 12.6 is less than 13.6. So, whatever section that we have provided, okay, is semi-compact, okay, and is adequate. Correct. I hope you are trying to understand that, okay, this is fine. In case, in case, right, if this is slender, so you need to understand that we have to increase the thickness of the gazette plate, correct. You have to increase the thickness of the gazette plate so that, okay, it does not become slender. So, we have provided 16. Probably if you had taken something like 12 mm in this particular case, it would have been slender, right, okay. But 12 mm is also more than the thickness of the flange correct in this case that is okay, but okay here we are slightly taking a higher value and you can notice that okay we have hardly correct right uh, satisfied 
okay, almost satisfied okay, uh, the criteria, we are on the verge of this particular limit okay, is what you need to understand. Okay. Now, the next one is to find the combined thickness okay, of the base plate okay, and the gusset angle. So, please understand okay, if you just try to uh, talk about the situation that we have here. right? So, we have the base plate correct on the base plate okay, we have kept this particular column okay, and on either side we have got the uh, gusset plates correct and then we have the cleat angle correct. If you just try to look at from the bottom correct, the pressure is trying to up, I mean, uh, uh, push okay, the plate uh, at the top and you need to notice that okay, when it push, pushes okay, not only the thickness okay, of the slab base okay, will resist this bending okay, even the uh, thickness of the angle okay, that is 115 leg angle will also participate to resist the bending correct. Okay, action okay, the, uh, uh, when that we that is caused by the upward pressure that we are trying to have here, right? So right now we know that okay, so this is uh, 620 and this is 540, correct? So this is 620 and 540. So that is the base plate that we are trying to have here, correct? And then we are trying to calculate the bearing pressure, and bearing pressure is calculated as what? Total load by area. So that is length into width of the plate we have we have calculated. So total load by area has given you a value of 5.08, okay, definitely less than 9 uh, mega Pascals. Now, please understand why this has less, why I could not uh, provide a smaller size plate so that I could have pushed it higher okay, because of the limitation. Please understand in, with respect to the length direction, I have to put the gusset angle and I cannot just try to have a lesser length than that. Okay, we hardly have uh, taken 8 millimeter larger, okay, 8 mm larger is what we have done okay, from 612 to we have rounded it out to 620 and with respect to the width direction here, correct, you have already seen that I should accommodate 8 bolts, that is 4 on this side of the flange and 4 on this side of the flange okay, in, in the gusset angle and hence I am supposed to take okay, at least 540 millimeters because of that okay, the, this, the uh, pressure. Okay, on, on the concrete is sufficiently small when compared to its bearing strength. Okay. Now, having done this, okay, so the next thing is you should understand what is the critical section at which we have to calculate the bending moment correct? in the, in the base. Now, look at this. So, the, uh, this is the elevation that we are trying to talk about in this particular case. So, this is the slab base that we have here. Okay. This is the column section that you are trying to see over here, okay, the side elevation. Correct. So, that is a gusset plate 190 millimeters, uh, 290 mm tall correct height and that is the uh, uh, angle section that we are trying to have here, the angle section correct. Now, the critical section that we are trying to talk about is okay, right at the face, okay, the front face of the angle section correct. So, we need to just calculate this distance, what is this distance is what we are going to calculate right now. Okay. You know the total length is 620 correct. So, from 620 correct you deduct okay the uh, depth of the column so this entire column section right is 350 millimeters correct i have deducted from 620 okay the the column size correct and then i have placed two gusset plates of 16 millimeters okay i have further reduced that i have further reduced that and then you all to please understand that okay we should also deduct this angle thickness here angle thickness okay that is the angle thickness is 15 so i'm going to deduct that okay so that gives me Okay, this length as well as this length okay, put together. So, I am just trying to divide it by 2 so that I get it as 104. So, that means the, the length here that we are trying to have is 104. I hope you have understood this. Now, okay, this particular uh, I mean, uh, 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 plate is subjected to upward pressure, upward pressure something like this. We have the upward pressure acting here. So, it is a just a cantilever beam cantilever plate that we are trying to have here and we have calculated in the previous slide okay, the bearing pressure. The bearing pressure is 508 mega Pascals. Okay, 508 mega Pascals. So, this pressure whatever we are trying to see here correct okay, is nothing but 5.08 mega Pascals, 5.08 mega Pascals correct right which is being trying to uh, it is trying to uh, pro, uh, push the plate from the bottom. Now, notice that here okay, we have got two plates which is which are resisting this upward lift okay one is the thickness of the plate and the other is the thickness of the angle so that's why we are trying to say combined thickness what should be the combined thickness okay that we should have at that particular section correct i hope you have understood this 
So, with this, so we just try to calculate this is 104 we have seen how we have got it. So, we just try to calculate the bending moment at the critical section which is nothing but W L square by 2 correct. So, W is your pressure 5.08 5, 5 uh, uh, mega Pascals right 104 uh, uh, cantilever projection square by 2 and that gives you the bending moment okay at the critical section which is 27,000 okay 472.64 Newton millimeters correct. So, this is the value of uh, moment that is acting at that particular point correct. Now, okay we just try to look at class okay 8212 IS 800 2007 right it just try to give you what is the moment capacity okay of the uh, combined thickness of the base plate and angle uh, leg is what you need to understand okay for any thickness for any thickness okay of steel plate okay what is the moment carrying capacity is what uh, this particular uh, class gives you and it says that the design bending moment is equal to 1.2 times F y Z e by gamma m naught correct is it all that is the yield strength that is something but the elastic section modulus and that is something but the partial set factor that is 1.10 correct. Now, what we are trying to do is we are trying to substitute numbers here that is the value of F y is 250 mega Pascals okay uh, the gamma m 0 is 1.10 and look at this okay when we just talk about the elastic section modulus you assume 1 millimeter okay uh, uh, wide correct uh, plate okay and you try to calculate the uh, elastic section modulus that is B d square by 6 B is taken as 1 mm and D is thickness this is the combined thickness is what you need to understand combined thickness which is of the uh, uh, I mean uh, slab base as well as the angle 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 that we have provided okay combined thickness is what you need to understand here 1 into t square correct is what we have and further this m d b m d b right okay if you simplify this if you just try to put all these numbers okay this is what we have got 45.45 t uh, uh, square okay and now we are going to substitute okay this m d b with the value of bending moment that we have that we have arrived at correct in the previous uh, discussion that is at the critical section if we just try to check here at the critical section okay we did calculate this bending moment as 27472.64 we just try to put this number we try to put this number correct here right and then if you just try to look at this equation the only unknown is t okay just try to calculate it is 24.59 and I have just rounded it off to 25 millimeters I have rounded it off to 25 mm. So, 25 mm is the combined thickness combined thickness correct of your slab base okay and the uh, angle thickness is what you need to understand correct. So, we are trying to say that so what will be the required thickness of the base plate what will be the required thickness. So, you deduct okay you deduct the thickness of the angle. So, we already assumed the angle right uh, in the initial stage 150 cross 115 cross 15 millimeters thickness of the angle is 15 millimeters. So, you deduct 15 millimeters from okay that the total thickness required and that you have got it as 10 millimeters okay. So, that is as per this particular calculation 10 mm is sufficient okay is what we are trying to say, but look at this okay at any cost okay the thickness okay of your base plate should not be less than the thickness of the flange it should be more and what is the thickness of the flange 11.7 millimeters correct is 11.7 mm okay. However, I am just trying to provide okay the base plate as 15 millimeters here okay I would I would like to match the thickness of the slab base with the thickness of the angle and the thickness of the angle as you know is uh, 15 millimeters. So, I am just also trying to assume the base plate also as 15 millimeters. So, the combined thickness what we now have is 30 mm okay definitely more than 25 okay I am happy with this particular thickness okay. Now, apart from that okay I am also trying to say that we will just try to assume some bolts okay assume some bolts okay which connect okay the uh, uh, when uh, the the 115 uh, leg of the angle that is the horizontal leg of the angle with the slab base I am assuming it has 6 numbers nominal diameter 16 millimeters okay to just connect okay each gusset angle okay with the base plate and you can clearly see what is this okay. So, we just try to look look from plan okay in plan okay I am just trying to put okay 6 numbers okay these 2 bolts okay what I have assumed okay will be in line okay with the uh, uh, 2 rows okay or 2 columns of bolts that we had uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, placed here 
right. So, they are in line with this and again we had uh, two more bolts here, right, okay, series of bolts here, correct. So, again I am just trying to place all these things in line, okay. So, they are nominal diameter bolts 16 millimeters. I am just trying to place 16, that is 616 here and 616 numbers here and they just try to connect, they just try to connect the horizontal leg of the gazette okay, with the uh, slab base. Okay. So, just nominal, there is no calculations uh, in this particular regard, correct. Okay. And finally, the last uh, thing that we are not, not trying to talk about, that is the anchor bolts, correct. So, these are bolts okay, which are used to connect the slab base okay, with the concrete bed that we have here. Okay, and we just try to provide in a nominal way and please understand here, okay, I am not providing 4 because I do not have space. Okay, I am just trying to say let us try to provide only 2 okay, in this particular case. Now, please understand the base is subject to only axial compressive load, okay, no bending moment, correct. So, whatever problem that we have taken is only axial load, right. Okay, so, we do not have bending moment. So, the base plate is not subject to tension. Okay, therefore, provide 2 anchor bolts. You can also provide 4, but here we do not have space for 4. That is why I am just trying to say 2 anchor bolts okay, of nominal diameter okay, 20 millimeters length 600 mm okay, so that the base plate is, is kept in position okay, as shown in figure, correct. So, this is how I am just trying to put, right. I do not have space here, right, okay, to just try to have these uh, anchor bolts. Okay, these are the anchor bolts that you can see that is 1 and 2. I am just trying to have 2 anchor bolts placed like that. Okay. I hope uh, you have clearly followed this particular example. So, I have just tried to uh, take you through uh, uh, the, the important steps okay, that we have to understand okay, and then uh, uh, solve this particular problem, correct. So, uh, with this we close this uh, uh, presentation with respect to the design of uh, 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 gazetted bolted connection. I hope you have uh, really uh, uh, I mean understood all the basic concepts. So, we will just try to uh, consider uh, the design of uh, welded uh, uh, gazetted connection right in our next presentation right. Thank you.